Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Let me salute and commend our diligence and our commitment towards spiritual things. One, one of the indices that measure genuine hunger is your passion and your drive. Your ability to inconvenience yourself. He says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the shame despise the pain and so on and so forth so i want to commend everyone who has been able to make this sacrifice to be here this early the lord will do us good in jesus name bishop is an honor again thank you so much i do not take this lightly father speak to our hearts yet again the bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the lord in zion we thank you because your word will come with power and with grace. For in Jesus' much less name we have prayed. Please be seated. God bless you. Yesterday night, we began a discussion from John chapter 3. The encounter that Nicodemus the Pharisee had with Jesus we were able to delve into his contemplation and his frustrations when he saw Jesus manifesting such an invincible life, a life of victory, invincibility, and power. It got Nicodemus so concerned, he had to come and meet him by night and to ask what the basis for this kind of invincible life was. And Jesus traced that discussion and took it to the issue of birth and from there we established the fact that the bible recognizes two kinds of births number one we said is a natural biological birth that comes by your natural descent through the womb of a woman but we said the other which is considered more superior as far as your spiritual adventure is concerned is to be born again to be born of the spirit to be born of god hallelujah we looked at a few differences and one of the most striking differences if you recall we said that the natural birth does not depend on your will you have no power of choice but then when it has to do with being born again being born of god being born of the spirit you are the sole determinant as to whether that experience will happen to you or not. We explored a few other things yesterday and we thank God for his spirit. We thank God for his power. We had a brief discussion with Bishop after this place and I was expressing to him, um, uh, you know, joyfully so, how that I, this, this conference has become like a spiritual retreat for the people within this region beyond denominations beyond um, prejudices of tribe clan race it's been an avenue for people to just come and be built to be established and I think we should truly salute his lordship for making this kind of apostolic platform available hallelujah praise the name of the lord among the many things that happen in conferences like this is an upgrade of spiritual understanding. One of the things that must happen to every believer is that there, is, there must be a greater sense of enlightenment. Not just the fulfillment of the days of a program, but we must justify our stay and our sacrifices by coming up with superior light. Hallelujah. The Bible says that was the true light that lighted every man. So when it has to do with the ministry of light, everyone is qualified to partake of it. The light lights upon every man. Hallelujah. This morning I want to have a brief session with us. And just continuing from where we left off yesterday. Hallelujah. We'll read two scriptures and then I'll begin to teach. Number one is John 17 3 John 17 and verse 3 Jesus is praying now the Bible says in verse 1 that he lifted up his eyes to heaven and then he began to pray and when he gets to verse 3 
verse 3 just give us verse 3 he says and this is eternal life this is eternal life Jesus by himself describes for us in this verse the full import the meaning of a man having and accessing eternal life he says this is eternal life that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent that in a man's journey as far as the administration of eternal life is concerned if this reality is not captured in your Christian experience it will not look in your life as though you are a recipient of eternal life. This is eternal life. And now he does not even talk about receiving. He talks about knowing. That they may know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Are we together? Scripture number 2, Philippians 3 and verse 10. Philippians 3 and verse 10. This scripture was written by Apostle Paul. And the interesting thing is that Paul's journey to knowing God was more dramatic than uh, many of the apostles because his journey started with an encounter with Jesus. It's not like he was preached to by someone else and then eventually he met Jesus. His encounter with Jesus was what even introduced him to the experience of the life of God. But in spite of that, here's what he had to say. That I may know him. Now, if you read the Bible generally as though you are reading a novel, you may not really understand the full import. You need to understand the man who is speaking here. At the time Paul is writing this, he had ascended his apostolic ministry commendably. This was a man who had seen the hand of God. He was accustomed to visions, supernatural experiences. He's seen all kinds of manifestations. He was actively in the business of mentoring all the churches that were under his apostolic reach. And he was doing so with such dexterity and excellence. You would not expect such a man to be praying to know him. Probably his prayer would have been grace to finish strong. That's the kind of prayer you would think such a man would have. And here he unashamedly makes a prayer request known. There are times that he would say, brethren, pray for us and leave you to choose whatever you want to pray for him about. But here is a great apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ putting to the table a prayer request that represented his highest desire that I may know him and the power of his resurrection he said and the fellowship of his sufferings being made confirmable unto his death hallelujah so eternal life like we know and we began to discuss yesterday through the new birth experience starts with receiving but it is beyond the realm of receiving. Please listen. That the journey to eternal life starts by receiving through the spirit the life of God at the point where an individual acknowledges Jesus as Savior, as Lord and Christ based on the authority of scripture we know that you are declared righteous and upon that ground you are qualified to access the spirit of God into your spirit and all that happens through and by the ministry of the Holy Spirit this is what the Bible teaches us but that eternal life is an experience but eternal life is also a journey hallelujah the experience of eternal life is that there is an instant translation from the kingdom of darkness the Bible teaches into the kingdom of his dear son that the moment a sinner, no matter how dark, no matter how alienated from God, at the point where you come and acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus Christ, believing his substitutionary sacrifice, meaning his death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, and to believe that report, the Bible says, no matter how you feel, 
that eternal life is imparted, imputed into your spirit. You are declared the righteousness of God in Christ. You become joined to the spirit of God. Do we believe that? But then that the experience of eternal life does not end there. That there is a progressive journey. Are we together? That brings you into the manifestation. This is the aspect that many believers do not know about eternal life. So we're not in doubt as to the fact that you have placed your faith in the son of the living God. It is a fact according to the authority of scripture that whosoever believes in him shall be saved. Are we together now? So we claim to be recipients of this life and based on the authority of scripture we know that is true. But manifesting the potentials of this eternal life has been far from many believers and here Jesus and Paul are giving us another angle to the manifestation of eternal life the invincibility the potency the power that is encapsulated in that life is only released and manifested at the point of knowledge this is eternal life he says that they may know thee even if they have received from you it is not enough that they may know thee the only true god and jesus whom thou hast sent are we together now both of us say for instance can be given a phone imagine with me that there are two people standing one by my left the other by my right and all of them are given the gift of a brand new phone, say an iPhone. Are we together? Now, it is the same phone that was given to both of them. Are we together? And you were witnesses at the point where they were given. This one received and said, thank you, sir. This one received and said, thank you, sir. Fast forward a few weeks, you will find out that one person's life becomes efficient and excellent through the use of the same phone. Am I right? And the other one would barely have improved as far as the quality of his life is concerned. Now, it is a fact that both of them are recipients of the phone. But to be able to maximize that phone such that it translates to efficiency no longer depends on receiving. Receiving has happened. It is their knowledge of the entire dynamics of the phone for one person that can be the reason why he becomes wealthy for one person that can be the reason why he increases his network and contacts for another person that phone will remain a burden in his hand for many months so if you say all those who have iPhones stand up both of them will stand up but all who have been blessed and changed by iPhone one will have to sit down is somebody following me now so I'm saying that the, the experience, listen carefully, if you understand what I'm teaching you, it will revolutionize your Christian experience. Because when you see two believers manifesting for one, an exceptional life, a life of victory, grace, power, wisdom, and all the multifaceted dimensions of the kingdom, it is not that another kind of eternal life was given to one, against the other the bible declares and we know from the authority of scripture that the same lord is rich unto all it was the same blood of jesus that purchased us the same redemption happened to us are we together the same quality of life was given to us but for most people our journey into exploring eternal life stops at the initial reception by faith and we do not explore the path that comes through knowledge the manifestation of eternal life experientially happens at the instance of knowledge. Please say knowledge. Everyone say knowledge again. Do not forget the example of the phones. I'm using a very simple example because I want us to understand. So the greatest man of God you know on earth and the most ineffective believer on earth even in Jalingo, are both recipients of the same life. It is by the same spirit. But the quality of their Christian experience, that disparity is not because God decided to isolate another person and give him another kind of life. They are all potentials that come from one and the same life. Hallelujah. 
the wealthiest man the, the most blessed man on earth is made of the same organs as the poorest the most ineffective man as far as their biological composition is concerned are we together the difference between two of them is not the biological composition no we agreed yesterday that the difference between presidents of nations and those who live mediocre defeated lives is not that one has two hearts or two heads or two brains no as far as the biological construct is concerned if you dissect the most successful person from an a standpoint of anatomy and you dissect someone who is almost dying somewhere on the road you will find the exact biological construct in them what then is the difference it is that one has moved beyond just receiving to accessing a certain kind of knowledge hallelujah so jesus says this is eternal life that they may know thee in other words, I am able to manifest these supernatural possibilities not just because I came from heaven, but because I paid the price to know you. You see, Jesus spoke about the Father and he spoke about his oneness with the Father in a way that disturbed the theology of the scribes and the Pharisees. How do you dare claim that you know God? This invisible God who had become a mystery to us, we only depend on what the prophets told us he is. Now you come and you try to bring a level of relationship that is very disturbing. At what point did you know him? No man had seen the father at every time. You all said that. And now you are bringing him so near. You are bringing him so near and saying we can even know him. That that mysterious God can be known. As mysterious as God is, he desires to be known. And Jesus says this is eternal life. Whoever passes beyond the gate of just receiving to exploring the knowledge of number one, the one true God and then number two Jesus whom he has sent that there are two rewards that are left with such a person Daniel eleven thirty two 32 B says whoever chooses to explore this spiritual pathway will be left with two rewards number one capacity they shall be strong number two they shall do exploits exploits is not just for Christians the potential for exploits is for Christians but the experience of exploits is for the people that do know their God not just the people who have received from their God you can receive from me and yet not know me receiving is a product of your ability to stretch forth your hand you, and the partnership of your hand being stretched and then my benevolence I can give to you without desiring a relationship many of you here have helped people orphanages and individuals you do not know their name they do not know your name they do not care the only connecting point in terms of a conversation is thank you they just say thank you go away are we together now and many people have shipped in that kind of mentality when they come into the faith life they do not want to know God all they want is to receive God I hear that somewhere within your economy there is a possibility for accessing wisdom can you give it to me now I think there is need for it now and because the same Lord is rich he will give benevolently but greater than receiving things that there is an advantage that comes to the believer when you explore the knowledge of God beyond the knowledge of things that they may know thee are we together now yes so you can see two believers manifesting supernatural possibilities and their possibilities are not just predicated listen I want to make a statement and I hope you understand what I'm saying do you know it is possible to even be anointing conscious and it can turn to become idolatry in your life because anointing itself is just a factor that emanates from the presence of God are we together now yes it is possible to desire an anointing as an idol worshiper seeking something from a deity and not from the standpoint of an individual that desires a functional relationship so most believers from a distance they study those they perceive to be close to god and write out the various spiritual virtues and qualities they see at work in their life and then in isolation to a desire 
to know God. They just begin to handpick these qualities and it forms the basis of their prayer life. I don't care about you, oh God, but somehow I found out that the power to heal the sick resides from you. Without my knowing you, I don't care. The, I Save me the burden of knowing you. Just transfer power directly to my life and I am satisfied. Save me the burden of knowing you. I just want to prosper and I hear that in your name a man can prosper. There are demons. Uh, I hear that there are yokes of darkness that plague me and I have learned from scripture that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. I don't need a relationship with you. Just find a way of becoming a system of defense. You see, because you have chosen to explore that pathway, you will see that your growth and your stature will be lopsided. So if we watch you, we can see the deficiency of a relationship. It affects your confidence. There are many things you'll be unsure of. You will make statements that you will go back and wonder if you are right or wrong because you are speaking about a stranger. Hallelujah. If bishop speaks about his dear wife or the wife speaks about bishop, there is a kind of confidence that they speak from. Are we together? Their confidence can almost be mistaken as pride because of their longevity of stay as a couple. They have explored one another with such precision and detail that they can speak if I want to give bishop a gift and I don't have access to him I can ask his wife with confidence and be sure he will be happy about what he's receiving that is the power of relationships that there are men who can explore God and know God that they literally become the manifestation of him here upon the earth when they speak is as though he's spoken when they stretch their hands it's as though he stretched his hand they have become it's it is it is the it is a level and a depth of relationship and he has covenanted on account of that knowledge to back them to bless them you see most people who are recipients of tremendous power today power was not the basis of their exploring god it was a sincere desire to know god and they found out that the economy of god is so designed that as you explore him there are many things you will find following you while you seek him power being one of them are we learning this morning so let's talk for a few minutes as we prepare to pray i intend to be very brief very very brief this morning It's really a charge what i'm giving us this morning I wrote here that the experience of eternal life for the believer depends on our knowing God. The experience, the manifestation of eternal life in and through the life of the believer does not just depend on receiving it, the fact of receiving it. It depends on knowing God. Please listen. You want to walk in grace and power. You want to live the victorious life in experience like the Bible says. It will have to be on the basis of moving past the awareness that I received it to exploring a functional knowledge. And for the sake of our discussion this morning, there are three dimensions to knowing God. This is really where I want because there are many believers who want to know God but like a compass, my assignment this morning is to be able to provide a scriptural template to exploring and knowing God. At, when an individual wants to know God, when an individual wants to seek God, what about God should he seek? What should be the beginning? How should you explore that vast realm of knowing God? We are talking about a God here who is limitless in his person, in his operation. Are we together? That even in heaven, they are still learning him and through the span of eternity will still be growing in the knowledge of God. And so I decided to break exploring the knowledge of God into three dimensions. Number one, very quickly. The first dimension to knowing God is knowing his character. Please write it down. The first dimension to knowing God for any believer who wants to see the reality of the life of God made manifest in experience, you will have to explore the knowledge of his character. Please say character. One more time, say character. A man's character makes up the frame of his person. Are we together? 
yes you know me explicitly when you take out time to study my character to study my person a few scriptures please in exodus chapter 33 reading from 18 and 19 thank you media for helping us with the scriptures exodus 33 18 and 19 moses made a very very audacious request so he's encountering the god of the hebrews the god of the bible and moses did not say give me moses said i beseech you if i found grace and mercy in your sight show me your glory and then the lord replies in verse 19 and he said i will make all my goodness i will make all my goodness to pass before thee and i will proclaim the name of the lord before thee and will be gracious to whom i will be gracious and i will show mercy to whom i will show mercy here is moses asking for his glory in other words lord i want to know the various virtues that make god god what is god composed of and he's saying you are asking for a description of my character i will cause an aspect of my glory called my goodness to pass over you that just knowing my goodness alone it was the knowledge of the goodness of God that resulted to the five books today that we call just an aspect of the character of God that a man saw resulted to a tremendous revelation that he documented five books that came from the knowledge of the goodness of God the psalmist encountered the mercy of God that was one of the richest dimension of his encounter about God and just that dimension of God it brought about a a chronicle of many Psalms just one aspect of the glory of God called his mercy the nation of Israel saw both the goodness and the mercy of God and just by exploring these two dimensions they became a small but invincible nation that every time their armies encompassed them and defeat was imminent they dropped their weapons of war and invoked his character you are good and your mercies endure forever and at that consciousness battles were turned around overnight without them having to use the sword when a man wants to know God you have to explore his character for every dimension of God's character you know there is a corresponding stature the character of God are they are like ladders for every manifestation of his character that is revealed to you it strengthens you and gives you stature there are certain fears that will die because of certain things you know about God are we still together one more scripture Psalms 145, please. 8 and 9. Psalms 145. Our confidence in this kingdom is because of something we know about God. Here's what the psalmist says. The Lord is gracious. Everybody say gracious. It says the Lord is full of compassion. Say compassion. The Lord is slow to anger and of great mercy. How did he know this? This is a man documenting his conclusion that having explored the character of God, this was his conclusion. That this is what I found out about God. Number one, that he is gracious. Number two, that when it has to do with compassion, he operates in the abyss abundance of it and then number three that as angry as the prophets propose God to be in my walk with God I have discovered that he is slow to anger that means it's not within his character to just want to destroy that men through the hardness of their heart push him and compel him to have to destroy but that in his character he is full of compassion and he's slow to anger that when you see God arise to act is the rebellion of men and their consistency of their violating him but in the economy of God he will always give men a chance to experience his compassion are we together there are certain fears that die 
die when you know God. There are certain negative prophecies you don't need to pray about when you know the character of God. Listen to me. The threat that comes to your Christian experience is a report card. It tells us the many facets of God you do not know. And the devil manipulates your ignorance and literally builds a weapon around your ignorance. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. One of the most classic and the most detailed from a theological standpoint, one of the most detailed representation of the character of God was done by the psalmist himself. You see, that man is a very serious man. That David man, you see, there is a reason why he's called a man after God's heart. Not just a man that saw the power of God. He truly sought. He says, oh Lord, you are my God. Is it not in your Bible? It says, early will I seek you. My soul longs for you to see your power and your glory even as I have seen in the sanctuary. As a result of his experience, God, look at his findings. Can we read this a little? Psalms 103. It is one of the most concise descriptions of the character of God from a theological standpoint. Every time you want to study the character of God in as, as, as detailed a, a fashion as you desire, go to Psalms 103. Please join with me and let's just read it very quickly. Are you ready? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Let's hurry up, verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth thine iniquities? Who healeth thy diseases? There are five benefits. That's number two. Number three, who redeemed thy life from destruction? Number four, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? The last of the benefits, who satisfied thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Now let's continue. Verse 6. Verse 6 now. The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He's describing God. He made known his ways unto Moses who are coming there and his acts to the children of Israel. Verse 8 now, the Bible says the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Hmm. Verse 9, he will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. This is good news while you are walking with God. He had not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquity. Verse 11. Okay, for the heaven is high above, as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. Verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgression from us. Be patient. Verse 13. Like a father pitied his children. Look at the artistry and creativity that was deployed in describing God. Now he switches dimension from being a judge to being a father. Like the way the father has pity upon his children, so the Lord pitied them that fear him. 14. For he knoweth our frame. I like the psalmist. This is why he deals with us so kindly. He knows our frame. He remembered that we are dust. For as for man, his days are like grass. As the flower of the field, so he flourished. Be patient. We're still reading. For the wind passed over it and is gone. And the place thereof shall not be known by it no more. Verse 17. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him. His righteousness unto children's children. We're almost there. To such that keep his covenant and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord had prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom ruled over all. In fact, we can stop here. Watch this. The Bible says 
that all of these descriptions so that if you do not know who God is and you begin to read Psalm 13 like an artist using a canvas he uses words to begin to paint the picture of God that at the end of reading Psalms 103 you should have an idea like if I say orange your mind has your mind is not thinking banana are we together now because from elementary school they connected pictures to words so when we say orange if I say injection you don't think a viral because you have so if I say God there should be a construct within your mind the one who is rich in mercy the one who is rich in love even though mighty to judge but he's slow in anger that information is what helps you to do ministry that information helps you to live a victorious life so when you are speaking to a drunkard and a sinner it is from the basis of that information about God you can tell him there is hope for your life and he says I am destroyed you don't know how many people I've killed then you draw from your knowledge that he's slow to anger no one that he can meet a man called Saul and convert him to Paul that is his character in display is someone understanding this don't tell me you know God if you cannot give me a detail of his character when they ask you to describe a man usually the first part of call is his character when you finish giving the whole physiological frame oh the man you will meet him he's usually quiet he doesn't talk too much usually you will see him smiling all the time when you see that man so the stranger is looking through the lens of the description of the character then he spots a man who fits the description you just gave and he comes to say sorry are you james you say yes he said finally i found you i was sent to look for you but the description that was given to me was that most likely he will shake you most likely he will smile he usually likes to wear a long regalia he is describing the man based on the character so that when you see the man who is not him even if he talks like him you will know it's not him because he will vet from the lens of his character satan can appear here as an angel of light but he cannot carry the character of the angel of light hallelujah satan can talk like a preacher satan can act like god he can come to you in dreams looking like god but you filter your revelations from the lens of god's character this is eternal life that they may know you are we learning already so we know God as we explore his character I promise it's a charge this morning so let's quickly go to number two the second dimension to knowing God as revealed in Scripture is to know his ways to know his ways Psalm 103 where we just read verse 7 it says he made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of God so the second layer to knowing God when you explore his character is to know his ways hallelujah the ways of God are a compendium of his modus operandi his methodologies how he behaves how he acts Matthew chapter 22 and verse 29 let's see what the bible says 22 29 matthew hallelujah let's read it together ready one to read everyone jesus answered and said unto them ye do err not knowing the scripture nor the power of god the word air there means default mistake deviate decline from the reference are we together now that your inaccuracy spiritually is because you do not know the scripture not just because you do not have it you do not know the scripture when you read down he says the scripture testifies of me that means the study of the scripture should should move beyond being a story to become a roadmap everything in the scripture is a compass leading to Christ a dimension of him are we together so it can start from a story it can start from a parable it can start from a prophecy but eventually it should be a description of the ways of god listen let me tell you this and i want to make a very polite but firm statement 
one of the major troubles that is plaguing the church not only in Nigeria but in Africa is that even among people who are sincere many of our principles and practices are in many ways extra biblical they are a deviation from the recommended patterns are we together and the reason is because most people may know the character of God but they have not taken time to learn his ways before NAFTA gives you the approval to either run a bakery are we together or run some pharmaceutical company it, 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 even if you tell them you are a pharmacy you will have to detail and outline the procedure that you're going to follow are we together there is what is called best practices am I right on that that there is a recommended standard for everything there are institutions of uh, pharmaceutical institutions medical institutions when they look at someone to call the person authorized or to call Call the person professional you do not just vet his intention you must vet the procedure am i right on you want to perform surgery on someone before the medical council allows you they have to vet whether you understand the procedure so if a patient is hurt and the doctor is being probed the first thing they will probe is to verify whether you are a doctor indeed if they find that they will have to look into the procedure that you followed if you followed every procedure right but everything failed you are vindicated because as far as you're practicing right you got it right am i are we together so one of the challenges with most believers is they do not know how to produce results god's way they know how results happen sometimes anyway but God's way his authorized system how does God prosper in the kingdom how does God lift men in the kingdom how does God anoint in the kingdom how does God give influence in the kingdom how does God restore in the kingdom how does God administer mercy in the kingdom we need to know the ways of God knowing the ways of God is the key to running away from error because in an atmosphere of desperation any formula will be worth your embracing you will need to know how God acts so that you know that this is God and this is not God are we together there is a way God anoints if you are not anointed that way you know it is not God that anointed you are we together there is a way God reveals his plans and purposes. If that revelation does not subscribe to that pattern, you know that a familiar spirit is manipulating your destiny. There is a way God prospers so that when you see different templates of prosperity coming to you, you can say even though this looks like a very juicy offer, but this does not subscribe to the way God prospers. For instance, the Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience. Say faith and patience. When it has to do with obtaining in the kingdom, you can never bypass faith and patience. Any formula that defies faith and patience has already deviated from God's pattern. Hallelujah. How do people grow spiritually in the kingdom? There is a predefined formula that a weak person can become a mighty person. It's scattered in scripture, Acts 2.42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, are we together? And in fellowship, in breaking of bread, and in prayers. This is the pattern they were given by Jesus. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. But we will give ourselves continually to the ministry of the word and to prayer. So if your spiritual growth is happening by another formula outside of these recommendations, you are already deviating from the ways of God. It is easy to walk in the will of God when you understand his ways. Hallelujah. Just because it produces results does not mean it has secured God's approval it must be by his way because you see 
Janus and Jambas can throw their rod through another formula and it can become a serpent. And Moses can also throw his rod. So the issue is not just the serpent. The issue is whose way did you follow to arrive at that result? Don't just tell me you were anointed. We have to vet the formula. Show me the pathway to your growth and experience. And I can tell you whether you are in deviation or you are in alignment. Hallelujah. Are we learning? Yes. Apostle, I want to rise. I want to be known by everybody in my generation. Let me see the blueprint you are following. And I will tell you whether the end of your journey will be disaster. Without prophesying. The ways of God is an accurate compass. It tells you the end from the beginning. I can tell you that the pathway you are following, there is sorrow being programmed there. Not by prophesying negatively. All I need to do is to see the road you are following. Did the Bible not say that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man? It says, but the end thereof. There is a way of doing ministry that seemeth right. There is a way of doing business that seemeth right. There is a way of parenting that seemeth right. There is a way of living your life that seemeth right. But the, it will be justified eventually by the side effects that come with you. If it is the way of the Lord, the sorrow component will be edited out of the... It is an accurate path that you must follow. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. There are people in their wild quest for fame, respectfully speaking have gone away from the patterns of God and went to explore other options to being famous. Some of them have lost their lives today. Some of them lost their bishopric, unfortunately. But there were others through the foolishness of obedience and, and alignment, one step after the other, a little here, a little there, not having any comeliness to be desired, but they followed the way of the Lord. And they have found out that through those scars and through those pain, and through the cross is a throne waiting for you. The way of the Lord is the way of excellency and the way of wisdom. There is a way genuine spiritual power comes upon men. There is a way wisdom comes upon men. There is no amount of impartation, for instance, that will replace the place of diligence and study. It says, study to show yourself approved. The assignment of the spirit of wisdom is to walk in partnership with your diligence. To see that you access superior dimensions of knowledge, but it will not replace diligence. So I can know how to help a believer by studying the road you are following. Listen, I wish I had the time. I would have shown you something the Lord revealed to me very profoundly from Scripture. Every name you see in the Bible is not just the name of a biblical actor. Every name you see in the Bible, captured within it, is a roadmap that leads to a kind of believer. So when you say Abraham, Abraham is not just the name of a patriarch. Abraham is also a coded language to a kind of pathway that produces a certain believer. Elijah is not just the name of a prophet. Elijah is a roadmap that produces a kind of believer. Gideon is a roadmap. Ruth is a roadmap. So when God wants to build you for destiny, as you walk with God, you will start finding out that certain names stand out in scripture. It is not the name he wants you to study. There is a history behind those names that if you follow, you will start becoming a certain kind of believer. When God wants to prepare you having the destiny of Esther, he will lead you to Esther, not just to study the woman, but to study how God God lifts people from their lowly estate and connects them to royalty for the purpose of using their influence to advance the program of God. Can I tell you, one of the ways you will know you are working accurately with God is you must find a parallel in the Bible of the way you are following. There has to be a figure in the Bible that parallels what the Spirit is doing in your life. If you have not found it yet, 
either keep searching or repent from the way you are following but if it is God you are learning somewhere in your Christian experience please listen to what I'm telling you if God is raising you to be a prophet you will find a similarity of your dealing with one of there has to be a parallel Jesus opened the book and he found where it was written concerning him it is written concerning everybody. It is not written in plain language. It is written in codes. It will take the spirit to open your eyes. To say, so this Nehemiah I've been reading is actually my destiny. It is not just a cup bearer of a king. From a historic and a doctrinal standpoint, you are dealing with the cup bearer of the king. But when the prophetic layer of scripture is open, you will see that that man you call Nehemiah is actually somebody in Taraba that God is raising. There must be a scriptural expression of your destiny. Hmm. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? So my dear lady, you may not know why God is isolating you. You may not be the firstborn, but it's like God is training you as both a man and a woman. And you are saying, Lord, the harshness of this training, one day in the place of prayer, Deborah will stand out for you. And you will now see that that Deborah you have been reading is actually the roadmap you have been following because there is a kind of warrior he's training you to become. I know the lion. I know the lamb. I know the lion. I know the lamb. I believe in the lion. I believe in the lamb. And I'll follow the lion. I follow the lamb every time in ancient times when a child of destiny was born the kings would ask their wise men to go and check the archives find it if it is somebody who is a person of promise there must be something prophetic about that person go and find it and they will say truly we have found it when Jesus was born remember what happened he said, no, go and search. And they came, they say, it's true. It's true. Oh, king, it is true. By prophecy, someone is born. He said, oh, really? Okay, let me know where he is so that I will also come and worship him. The king was threatened because no two kings lived there. But prophecy called that man a king, not a baby. And even as a baby, he would not even allow him to grow. Let's kill him early because that destiny, so provided it is written, it was come to pass. The knowledge of God's character, the knowledge of God's ways is called the mysteries of the kingdom. Listen, respectfully speaking, if you're a man of God here, the strength of your efficiency in ministry, as far as the ministry of the word to people is concerned, to improve their life depends on your vast understanding of the ways of God. So if somebody comes to meet you now and says, man of God, things are not going well. I have lost my job. I have lost immediately from the files in your spirit. You now go to like a library. How does restoration happen in the kingdom? You know how you use an encyclopedia electronically while the person is talking you already know with the precision of a doctor this man is in need of restoration but not any kind of restoration there is a pathway and then the person comes to say god is leading me I, I things have not been working in my life and yet god gave me a strange instruction that i should carry a serious seed and come and sow could that be god you can vet it knowing the ways of god and say you are very accurate in the midst of your pain he's calling you to sow it is God. It is consistent with how he behaves. There is a way 
there is something he's bringing he's programming in your life and he said i saw you in a vision and god said i should come and drop this pastor i'm just a young believer with accuracy you can let him know that as painful as this is there is a scripture that is written that he that weepeth bearing precious seeds shall doubtless return rejoicing so that activity is consistent with that which is written even though it is painful you can tell him have no fear you are walking in the ways of God without the knowledge of the ways of God it is impossible to help people you will only help people emotionally so someone comes to say I'm having all kinds of dreams and there are attacks in my life and the only thing the man of God let, well let's pray Lord help this man me too I don't know what to tell him it's just that I happen to be his pastor Lord help him no but you should be able to know when you know the ways of God and the person comes to you like Joseph coming to his father and says, Pastor, I had a dream innocently. I saw the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowing. You begin to rejoice and say, Ah, so this is Joseph. Now, let me prepare you. My dear son, there is a pit coming. My dear son, there is Potiphar's wife coming. Build stamina in the midst of the storm. Go and start praying three hours. Why am I the one praying three hours? So that when you are in that pit, if it is Joseph I saw, there must be a pit there must be Potiphar's wife so my assignment is to prepare you dear Joseph so you don't die of offense when you are in the pit and so that you are not weak spiritually under the influence of Potiphar's wife I prepare you to have the stamina to remain in the prison until the king sends for you this is how we help men so when members come to us we are seeing different characters in the Bible an innocent girl comes to you as a man of God you are not just seeing a lady from somewhere in Mubi or in Taraba you are seeing Esther coming from her dreams and her description you know that this is Esther you know how to create a mentorship program that is allocated for her growth this is how we make men mighty mighty in stature you don't administer the same training to everybody no elijah cannot mentor ruth no if elijah mentors ruth she will not become ruth she will never meet boaz if elijah mentors ruth she will become elijah so as a man of God, when Ruth comes, you have to switch to become Naomi. If it is Ruth you want to produce, only Naomi can produce Ruth. Only Elijah can produce Elisha. Only Moses can produce Joshua. The problem is Elijah is mentoring everybody. So someone comes with the destiny of a Ruth and becomes Elisha and does not find fulfillment being Elisha and says no something in my spirit is saying I'm following a wrong path now you understand what Paul means by I become all things to all men I can switch dimensions based on my perception on what God has called you to be so there is a gentleman when you see him with the destiny of Elisha and Elijah you can lock him up and he said I don't know why God is asking me to fast for three months I fasted January three months and you look at him you say I know that your training is hard but I know what you are becoming go ahead and do it hmm. another person will come and you say listen go and get those books because you are Daniel it is your intelligence that will be needed in Babylon go and settle down make sure you go for the masters go for PhD because although you are a prophet it will be concealed in knowledge it is governmental power that will elevate you in Babylon you see we continue to make mistakes in mentoring believers because we have not known that the names in the Bible represent spiritual dimensions the Bible is not made of Elijah alone Abraham plus Sarah plus Gideon plus Deborah plus Peter plus Paul are we together plus Andrew plus all these people equal the characters in scripture and we have been given the unique mandate by men of God to bring and raise these diverse people you must know the ways of God enough to be able to help men so someone can come and meet you 
and say i don't know why the lord is i i keep feeling that i should go and walk in the national assembly and you look at the person and say give me a moment let me look at you not from the lens of a preacher let me wear the google of one who i need to trace the path you are following from scripture spirit of the living god what is the destiny of this young lady and he said that is esther in the making and he said ah go go it is the pathway that will lead you to find a hazardous you are following the right path are we together now yeah hmm. please sit down let me wrap up has god helped someone this morning Please hear me, Taraba. Your destiny is locked up here. Your assignment in this conference, please hear me. Many of you, by this teaching, you need to go back and let the scroll be unlocked. Find out where you are here. And find out whether you have been trying to be Ruth when you are Esther. Mm, no find out whether you have been trying to be david whereas you are gideon moses don't ask me why they were attacked from your childhood that is how the destiny of moses is what is it with sickness and people hating me as a little child do you not read about moses was moses spared even as a baby all deliverers are attacked even from their birth do you not read about Jesus, the Savior, the Deliverer? So when you tell me from age two, sickness wanted to kill me. As a young person, everybody kept hating me. Uh -huh. um, you are describing a picture by your pain. And I can trace your destiny from scripture. Now it makes sense to rejoice in the midst of your pain. Count it all joy because in the midst of that pain, it is leading you through a roadmap. You can now laugh in the midst of storms. I don't know why all my siblings hate me. I don't know why I'm the last born, yet everybody comes to meet me for advice. It's more than just being a nice person. Prophecy is calling you and saying, are you not seeing? Destiny is waiting for you and saying, if you know the ways of God, you will know how to navigate your own path in destiny and know how to help people. If you are David, make sure you are not only a musician, you must learn the art of war because you will fight many battles in your life. If you are David, train your eyes early so that you don't make the mistake of David in the Bible. Train your eyes and discipline yourself spiritually because one day you will look at Bathsheba. Make sure when it is time for war, go for war. Don't be in your house. There is an implication. If you stay in your house during the time of war, you are going to see Bathsheba. If you are Samson, protect the covenant that guards the spirit of might in your life. If you are Samson, Delilah will come. She will not come as a woman, but she will come. Samson, your covenant is in your hair. So when you see other people careless with their hair, that is because they are not Samson. But because you are Samson, you have to protect your hair. You will find out that God's business with you centers around your hair, not your hand. Because your hand does not look like it. Delilah will ask you, how come you are not macho yet you are strong? You must learn how to keep silent and only speak when it is necessary. That is the training of Samson. If you are a noisy Samson, you will die before the time of your manifestation. It was the inability to keep quiet as a Samson that plucked his eyes, his hair. Let me give you the last one. The person you should thank is your, your, your Lord Bishop for hearing God enough to put as simple as this is. Many of you is when you are lying down quietly, this message will be on replay in your spirit again. You will now say, ah, so this is my life. I see. Hmm. This is why he came to me. So I am Gideon. I am Gideon, the least in my father's house. 
and my father's house the least in the clan I have always been angry why are we the poorest the smallest now I see from knowing the ways of God that that is a Gideon in training you now go to scripture and start subscribing to the training that transforms you to become a mighty man of valor David I know you are destined for the palace but make sure you do not run away from the wilderness if you run away from the wilderness Goliath will kill you your training is in the wilderness so when you are alone rejoice because that is where you will learn how to kill the lion with nobody clapping for you you will learn how to kill the bear with nobody clapping for you but one day as small as you are you will be taking food to your loved ones and you will meet a beast that is warring when you hear that roar for many people it is oppression but for you it is a sign that a season has changed I sense an anointing just resting on three people I just saw that light three people that grace in the name of Jesus Christ may that grace rest upon you that there is an impartation a quickening in your spirit man as you are hearing this now the Lord is opening scripture and he's showing you showing you your destiny through the prophetic blueprint of scripture you don't have to bring them out here just pray in one minute before we wrap up one minute while you are seated someone is finding the road map into his prophetic destiny <laughs> ah, this is eternal life this is eternal life Sadebash kadabra teke parakatosh. Ah, it's time for you. Now you see it's connecting to your dreams. Your destiny is making sense now. Parakatas kapakatosha pariata. Preacher, now you know that the journey you have been taking in ministry, as painful as it is, there is a character in scripture you are becoming. Do not abort your training. Do not abort your training. Ten members, even after two years, don't be discouraged. It's not that you are not anointing. You are, you are not anointed. There is a certain character you are becoming. Pray in one minute. And then I'll give you the last key. Shaba kaparakatapa Empra de Gebeleke Toshka Prakatoska de Belendeka Shabra Sabaska de Balakato Prande Gebeleke Tos. No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. No wall you will kick down, lie you will tear down, coming after me. No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. No wall you will kick down, lie you will tear down, coming after me. Alice, Abaratos here. Esther, remain faithful in the training of Esther. Deborah, remain faithful in the training of Deborah. Ruth, remain faithful in the training of Ruth. David, you are going to be a mighty king. Don't expect your training to be like that of a mediocre. We are talking about David. Elijah, you will become a mighty prophet that will judge the works of Baal so obtain grace and stamina in the midst of the pain thou son of Tishbite Elijah the Tishbite endure endure the fasting endure the hours of training endure the discipline and the consecrations you are Elijah Esther begin to learn the language of royalty you will need Ahasuerus permission and cooperation. Learn how to make Ahasuerus happy. Understand the dynamics of favor. The Jews are depending on your wisdom. 
your carelessness can empower her man to destroy God's people in Jesus name we pray please sit down let me give you the last one and then we'll wrap up I hope I've not lost you this morning please let me challenge you go online listen to this message again this message is a retreat manual this is not something just to hear in a conference when this conference is over go online and get it this is eternal life I'm showing you the dynamics the administration of stepping into the experience of that life you want to be invincible your life being a sign and a wonder it begins by making that prayer that decision but it does not stop there there is a network of pathways you must follow for the rich capture of eternal life to be made manifest that they may know thee the one true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent apostle I want to speak and to see the power of God move in a meeting is more than an impartation uh -uh. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. that handkerchiefs and aprons are taken from your body no you can choose to be a herbalist but if it's genuine anointing from heaven from God there is a pathway that evolves a man into that possibility can I give you the last now the knowledge of his character number one the knowledge of his ways number two finally the knowledge of his power Ephesians 1 The knowledge of his power. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God Hosanna Hosanna Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God The Lion of Judah The Lamb upon the throne We hail you most high I was caught up in the spirit many years ago and I heard the angel singing this song I didn't write it it was a song that I heard and I brought from the realm of the spirit mm. we hail you most high we worship you we hail you most high we hail you we worship you we hail you most high hello madonna Hello, Madonna. Please sit down. Ephesians 1 verse 18. Spare me a few minutes, but I want you to be sensitive. Because I sense in my spirit, even though the impartation proper will be in the night, but there are some of you, your hunger cannot wait for night. Something is already being activated within your spirit man. There is a hunger that is creating an urgency in the spirit. There is an apostle. There is a prophet. The, the leaf, the leaflet of your destiny is being opened as a man of God. There, there is something in the spirit. A fountain is being broken within the spirit. Allah, Shah, Sata, 
Kabe Talika Prate Sadidash Atematas Kobadikata I am exalting you, say the Spirit of God. Your eyes shall see. Your eyes shall see. Ken Shanes Kabata Kaprekate Bakapos Eprendeke Parakoskiata. It's a new dimension. I open you up to a new season. Say the Spirit of the Lord. Your eyes shall see. 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 Oh, 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 Ephesians one and verse eighteen. The knowledge of his power. Hmm. Paul was praying over the believers in Ephesus. It was a jurisdiction that was under his apostolic coverage and mentorship. And he was helping the believers to mature. And he prayed a prayer. He says that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints I like the next verse and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the king of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in the world but also in that which is to come and had put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church even his body, the fullness of him that filleth all and in all. Listen, in all your knowledge, if you do not have the knowledge of his power, you cannot walk in dominion. Mm -mm. Manifesting the experience of dominion is beyond claiming it. There is access to the knowledge of his character. Access to the knowledge of his ways. Access to the knowledge of of his power ladies and gentlemen it is at this realm that men in the spirit are separated from boys this is where the fountain of grace flows the knowledge of his power encapsulated within this revelation is the prayer request of many people the desire to heal the sick to walk in dominion the desire to manifest authentic kingdom power ladies and gentlemen you have been praying oh God grant me access to genuine spiritual power this is where it lies that you will know the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe I have spoken once the Bible says and twice have you heard that power belongeth to God the power to heal the power to raise men the power to deliver the power to speak the purposes of God over nations and shift spiritual climates the power to bring down revival across territories it resides in a revelation 
please hear me when you have access to this truth my dear believers respectfully speaking you will turn taraba you will turn the north here upside down not just by religious bigotry and fanatism but a manifestation of authentic provable grace it's one thing to say it but it's another thing to show it this kingdom is not only a kingdom of speech in this kingdom there is the demonstration of power he says and when i came to you i did not come in the excellency of speech but in the demonstration of power that your faith would not rest upon sophia the wisdom of men but upon the power of god acts chapter 8 and verse 5 the bible says philip went down to samaria and he preached christ unto them verse 6 he says and the people with one accord gave heed to those things which philip spake hearing and seeing man of god this is a dimension you need to enter people have heard too much they need to see if it is the gospel men must hear and see oh taste and see that the lord is good don't just tell people god is good let them taste and see that the lord is good can i tell you sincerely and i say this respectfully speaking do not downplay the role that the power of god has to play in bringing sinners to the cross in bringing believers to be transformed and in advancing the purposes of god the language that the devil understands is power it says psalm 63 and verse 3 say unto god psalm 66 and verse 3 say unto god how terrible art thou in your ways through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves there are situations in our lives and in the lives of our family members that require more than counseling and therapy demons are real i repeat demons are real wicked spirits are real jesus acknowledged their presence he called himself head over them but he acknowledged that they are there paul said i desire to come to you even i paul once and again but satan hindered them favor that was sent was coming to you but satan hindered it the members that were coming to you were coming but satan hindered them Jesus announced his messiahship by finding and reading in a place where it was written concerning him but he did not stop there he closed the book the Bible says and the eyes of everyone was fastened towards him and he saw a man whose hand was withered and he told that man if it is true that the spirit of the Lord is upon me if it is true that he has anointed me to bind up the brokenhearted to preach the gospel to the meek to bind up the brokenhearted to set at liberty them that are bruised to declare the acceptable year of the Lord if this is true then I come with the demonstration of that spirit stretch forth your hand and the Bible Bible says the man stretched forth his hand and his hand became hale and hearty was it not by the manifestation of power that Pharaoh gave up on the captivity of Israel it was not with discussions it was with a mighty hand an outstretched hand nine plagues and Pharaoh was still stubborn and one more plague that cost the life of his son whoever told you Satan will let you go just because God said you should walk in liberty do you not know he's a stubborn spirit are you not aware of his resilience and his determination he will stop you from having children he will stop your ministry from having visibility he will stop you from going forward he will misrepresent you to your world it takes stamina and the administration of power to create your realities and your possibilities in this life the ministry of power the church was founded upon the platform of power the church advanced in the early days upon the platform of power the church continues to thrive today making destiny progress and advancing the program of God upon the platform of power please hear me 
power is not for preachers he, when he said ye shall receive power he was speaking to all men he said for the promises for you and your children and your children's children when I talk of power I hope you know that is beyond falling down and standing up no we are not talking about that we are talking about the ability to manipulate the spiritual the socio-economic the physical climate over men until it becomes a reflection of the dominion of Jesus power that does not translate to liberty is not power power is beyond a basis for marketing the ministry of a man no for many of us our pursuit for power is just as a way of of creating validation the assignment of power is more than that for every tear you see it is power that wipes that tear did you hear what i said everyone you ever see crying i want you to know that your compassion must be backed up by power to wipe the tears i have been 10 years without a child it takes more than saying sorry you stand as one who is sent by god and say in the name of jesus i bring you the power and the dominion of this kingdom why do we claim we belong to a kingdom of power and yet we are not able to demonstrate the riches and the power that resides within that kingdom it is because we have pressed for anointing but we have not pressed for the knowledge of the power that raised Christ from the dead do you know the kind of power that was exerted that brought Jesus from Hades back to the earth Paul said that you will know if that power can bring Jesus from the earth it can take anybody from the ground to the throne the power that the grave could not stand is it a job that will stand it the power that the grave could not stand sin satan hell and the grave all these forces were defeated hands down in the face of that power and he said as my father has sent me so send I you listen to me we're going to pray and wrap up for now but let me charge you as you come tonight come with your heart open you see when God gives us the privilege to travel to regions and steer believers like I said yesterday my greatest desire is not to be seen as a great man of God my greatest desire is to be seen as a privileged vessel that has been granted the grace and apostleship by God to be able to help hold the hands of many and bring them higher to greater spiritual pedestrians this is a nobler testimony than being a great man so every time God grants us the privilege let me tell you this and it's a it's disclaimer I will emphasize with all the miracles and the demonstration of the spirit the goal is not creating a celebrity out of this man a goal is seeing a man as a template for the possibility that everybody can enter in Christ this is eternal life that you see the healing is the administration of eternal life great is the mystery of godliness that God can indwell a man and turn ordinary men to become sons of God they call the apostles Zeus and Hermes because they could not they had to add a divine a divine addition to them that you could not be ordinary men manifesting these possibilities that at the end of this conference as a man of God having traveled from all far and near having shelved your activities perhaps other conferences you should not just go back saying wow he was a good preacher but that you can import a grace you probably did not come with and return back with it ah, that men can see you and say is Saul also part of them that you have accessed something from heaven light number one but power number two light number one but power number two in all you're getting get empowerment he said tarry ye in jerusalem i have taught you but teaching is not enough until ye be endued with power peniel 2023 it is not just that you are born to win if you are born to win you must be full of power it takes power to command dominion Jesus was not just full of grace and truth he was filled with the spirit beyond measure is he not in Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth the Bible says Peter was speaking in the house of Cornelius to the Gentile church the Bible says he went about doing good 
and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him what was the basis he was anointed with the Holy Ghost but he was anointed with power the disciples only had information and they could not do anything in the presence of the sick except when Jesus sent them with his name they came back rejoicing and said even the demons were subject to us in your name but a time would come when they accessed genuine spiritual power and with that power they worked valiantly they advanced the purposes of the kingdom can I tell you the darkness over Taraba the darkness over this region in the north is not just waiting for prayer through people alone as important as that is is waiting for men and women who have understood the full import of eternal life men who can stand like Elijah and make declarations from one point not in a radio station not in a TV station the spiritual climate does not need that paraphernalia to respond if you have genuine power the spiritual climate wherein you have been you are domiciled can acknowledge the fact that the hand of God is upon your life not by being called a man of God but that you exude power power genuine power from the spirit when I began my work with God I prayed that I would know him sincerely but I prayed a sincere prayer many of you may have heard it Pat Robertson he's gone to be with the Lord now I heard his testimony as a young man when he was about to start ministry 700 club CBN and he prayed three prayer points he said oh God grant me access to wisdom grant me access to favor grant me access to the anointing of the Holy Ghost I went back and I prayed the same prayer because the Bible says there are two ways of becoming number one is to follow them number two is to look unto Jesus these are the two ways by which transformation happens. Ultimately, we look unto Jesus, but for transformation to happen at a nuclear level, you must learn to follow them. There are some them who have obtained the promises. And I prayed that prayer. I said, Lord, do not send me to the nations if the only thing I have is a message. Do not send me to the nations if the only thing I have is an explanation creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of God grant and place something upon my life that in the midst of all these speakings we can import the reality of the life of God and with it correct and with it create and with it manifest divine possibilities in the lives of people can we spend two minutes praying this morning as we wrap up this session is it all right if we pray Please rise up on your feet. Just give your destiny these two minutes as we pray. Just one prayer point and then we pray. This is eternal life. John 17 and verse 3. That they may know thee, the one true God, and Jesus whom thou hast sent. And I've broken the knowledge of God for you into three compartments. Number one, the knowledge of his character. Number two, the knowledge of his ways. Number three, the knowledge of his power. Let that become your prayer point. Father, that I may know you. Go ahead and pray. That I may know your character. That I may know your ways. That I may know your power. Is someone praying? Peniel 2023 let it be from the depth of your heart the knowledge of his character making you a believer with confidence void of fear because you know who God is the Lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love when Jesus came before the Bible would talk about his power the Bible tells us in John chapter 1 that he was full of grace and truth. Go ahead and pray. Reveal your character. Give me confidence. Erode my fears. Let me become like you in experience. Through the knowledge of your character. Pray for the knowledge of his ways. Grant me intelligence to understand the modus operandi of the kingdom. The spiritual pathway that leads to the various outcomes 
the systems of advantage that have been provided for the believer in Christ and then pray the knowledge of your power the power to subdue principalities and powers in experience the power to exert dominion upon situations and circumstances the power to rewrite the stories of men's lives to reprogram the spiritual climate over men to enthrone the Christ across every strata of human activities to advance the program of God forcefully to keep Satan and demons at bay to see to it that the gospel gains grounds across the earth let me have the knowledge of that power for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed in Jesus mighty name we have prayed for one last time let me lend my voice with that of his lordship to encourage you that our session tonight is I will just share one more thing one more key tonight and then we'll have the time to be able to minister to the needs of people I believe in the Jesus that ministers to the needs of people hallelujah yes that the oppressed should not go back oppressed and then in addition to that the Bible says he sent a word unto Jacob and it lightened upon Israel that means every grace God gives a man should go beyond that man you are only it's like an MTN mast or you, you see how the mast is it is kept in one place but it does not serve itself people are able to connect within that region that is what God has called us to be we may be stewards of this mystery he has made us custodians by privilege and grace of certain dimensions of his power but the goal is not to keep it the goal is that freely we have received and we make it available to as many whose hearts are open there are pastors there are leaders there are business people there are many dimensions of graces that God wants to impart upon his people second Corinthians 9 8 says and God is able to make all grace all grace that means there are different facets and different dimensions of grace so the one you have may be good but there may be a dimension of grace that needs to be added upon it you may have wisdom but do you have honor you may have favor but do you have the grace for signs and wonders so your assignment is to appreciate the grace that God has given you so far according to Philemon 1 and verse 6 that the communication of your faith might be effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus but and in addition to that you must press to bring to your life and to your space other dimensions of graces perhaps for some of you virgin dimensions of graces that you may not have obtained this is our business for the night invite everybody you know that truly hungers and desires to ascend experiential in the spirit and to import the reality of eternal life in experience for now may the Lord bless you may the Lord honor you I stand upon the grace of his Lordship and I speak the blessing upon you in the name of Jesus as you prepare your heart for tonight I decree and declare that you will find the grace and the stamina to wait the grace and the stamina to have your heart prepared in the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands to Jesus and give him praise.